much. Um, good afternoon. Buenos tardes. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you today. I'm going to speak about um, families as partners in co-design of a localised model of care for children with medical complexity living in rural Australia um, and a part of an evaluation where we use the Paediatric Integrated Care Survey. Um, I work at the University of uh, Macquarie University. I'm the Associate Professor of Health System Sustainability um, at the Australian Institute of Health Innovation. Um, but I'm, I'm in a very lucky position that I get to collaborate with lots of different groups. And, and one of them has been the Children's Hospital Hospitals Network um, in Sydney and, and also the um, Murrumbidgee Local Health District. So just taking a, a step back and looking at the policy context around integrated care, integrated care models have been recommended by the OECD, the WHO, the King's Fund, Commonwealth Fund, and even the Australian Productivity Commission. Why do we need integrated care? Well, it improves quality of care, it reduces waste and harm, and it improves system sustainability, or so we hope. Um, and, and there are benefits for patients, for healthcare providers, and for the health system. In 2015, the OECD um, actually said that the Australian health system is too complicated for patients to navigate. And this is amplified by a split in funding and responsibilities between the federal and state and territory governments. In other words, the Australian health system is very complex and complicated. We have private health insurance. We also have so-called universal coverage, um, but a lot of doctors actually charge additional um, out-of-pocket fees. And private health insurance is only held by about 50% of the population. Um, so things do get complex. Um, hospitals are funded by the states and GPs, primary care is funded by the Commonwealth, the national government. So I can't talk to you about the rural experience before talking to you about the urban experience because the rural experience is based on a model of care that was developed at the Sydney Children's Hospitals Network. And Emma Dickens very nicely showed um, where the two hospitals within the Sydney Children's Hospital Network are. Um, if you take the two hospitals together as a network, we are the largest provider of paediatric um, tertiary care um, in the Southern Hemisphere. So the model of coordination that was developed was called Kids Guided Personalised Service or Kids GPS. Um, I'll be speaking about this in some detail tomorrow morning, um, but I just thought I'd give you a bit of background because without this, the, the model in the rural area just won't make sense. So we developed a, um, a child and young person centred model of care. Um, which wraps around them um, with a family lead, a lead from the um, tertiary paediatric centre and a lead in the community. Um, the model includes thorough assessment, planning um, and actions, including providing navigation and coordination, um, implementation of care plans and providing practical support such as um, you know, enabling families to self-manage their children's um, conditions. The model was enabled by um, service enablers, so care, care coordination was an was a enormous enabler in that model. Um, we also had a 24-hour um, hotline to which certain patients were attached if, they, if that was needed. My Health Memory, again, Emma spoke about that this morning, so that was an app held by the patient which helped with um, streamlining of appointments and it also had the shared care plan on there that the parent could share with whichever provider they were seeing at the time. We also used digital health platforms um, and, and health pathways, so referral pathways for GPs. But you can read a bit more about that um, in our publication and if you wish you can come in and listen to us uh, speak about this tomorrow morning. Um, but essentially this, this model showed that um, 
40% of ED presentations were prevented, about 42% of day-only admissions were prevented, and this resulted in approximately 2.4 million per annum savings for the Sydney Children's Hospitals network, but it also saved out-of-pocket costs for families. So here we go. It's another geography lesson from an Australian. <laughs> so this is Australia. I live here in Sydney, in the metropolitan area. This is New South Wales, and our health system divides us up into local health districts. Um, in terms of the size, we're about three times the size of the United Kingdom. Um, the population is about um, 8 million in New South Wales, but 5 million people live in the metropolitan area here, where the two children's hospitals are. Um, but I want to bring your attention to this area, the Murrumbidgee. Um, there is a local hospital called Wagga Wagga Hospital. It's about 500 kilometres away from Sydney. Um, the Murrumbidgee is 125,000 kilometres in area, but there are only 242,000 people living in that enormous area. So it's a rural area, and in Australia we do suffer the tyranny of distance. So just to put context around this, uh, I'd like to use an illustrative case. Um, so meet Addison. She lives in a small town in the Murrumbidgee local health district. She was born with liver failure, needed a transplant at five months. She lives with her mum, dad and brother, and you can see her there. Um, for that family to access the local hospital, which you can see here in snow, yes, we do get snow in Australia, um, it takes 20 minutes for them to drive to the local hospital. It takes 90 minutes to drive to the regional hospital at Wagga Wagga, and it's a five hour drive to Sydney. Um, and this little girl and her family were traveling to Sydney once a week for regular blood checks. Um, the dad works night shift and often he would drive five hours to Sydney after finishing night shift. So this is what the mum said. Um, there was worry around whether we would be able to get help locally. Would they know what, what to do when they might only see one or two babies a year? Even simple things like a blood test. Often the, te the staff are not trained at our local hospital or pathology collection to collect blood from kids. Even the antibiotics she needed were not available. And again, the driving five hours and you know she had to breastfeed sometimes so they would have to stop. Um, and then there was a detour. And I love this last comment, you know, and then you have to try and drive around a foreign city. So actually going to Sydney is like going to another country for them. <laughs> um, and also they have a son um, and it was very hard to, you know, organise um, babysitting and even leave, even leave him while they went to the city with the sick child. So a new model of care was needed for kids such as this. Um, a co-design approach was used um, and there was very close collaboration and partnership between the Murrumbidgee and the Sydney Children's Hospitals Network. And there were many lessons um, that the Murrumbidgee took away from the kids' GPS model that I showed you earlier. However, the model that works in the city may not necessarily work in the country. So formative evaluation was a really important component before the co-design could start. And much of that was actually interviews with parents, consultations with staff and management. And today we're really concentrating on parents as the partners here. So semi-structured interviews were taken. Um, there were 18 parents of children with medical complexity. Um, we used the interview schedule. The, the way that the interviews were conducted was flexible. It was either face-to-face -face or by phone, or if the parents pre preferred, they could write a story of their experiences. Um, detailed notes were taken. Um, and using an inductive approach, we conducted thematic analysis of, of the field notes and transcripts. And the key themes that came out is limited availability of local services in the rural areas. And that's, um, that's very common in Australia. It's not just services for kids with chronic complex conditions, it's services 
in general. Um, there were financial constraints, so loss of income and out-of-pocket costs, from mainly from travelling into the city all the time. Um, difficulty navigating the system, where do I go if I need help? Um, there was poor communication across systems and sectors and with the families. Um, and of course, families felt the geographical isolation um, and social isolation that often comes with that. So the Paediatric Care Coordination Model, the PCC, um, involves care coordinators. Mainly, um, care coordination is provided by specialist nurses. Um, shared care plans are developed and shared with all health providers and with the parents. Um, telehealth consultations are provided. The Murrumbidgee is able to provide phone support Monday to Friday during hours. Um, and then the, the hotline is linked to the local hospital, um, which can then transfer the call to the Sydney Children's Hospitals Network if there is an emergency or a, or a difficult problem. There are cross-sector partnerships, so there are partnerships um, across health sectors and also with social care. So um, the care coordinators looked at the social needs of the families as well. Um, upskilling of staff and education, but also upskilling and education for parents to increase self-efficacy and build confidence to look after the child. Um, in terms of the Paediatric Integrated Care Survey, uh, that was developed at the Boston Children's Hospitals. It is a family experience measure of integrated care, so very specific to integrated care. There are five domains and 19 core questions. The domains include access to care, care goal creation and planning, family impact, communication between the healthcare professionals and the parent, team functioning, um, performance quality and connectivity. So they're the five main domains, but there are other modules within the PICS that um, could be used. For, so for instance, there's a module on education. We digitized the survey, but interestingly, parents actually liked filling it out on paper or being called um, and answering the questions over the phone. Um, so we have results, um, and these are preliminary results, um, on 40 children whose parents completed the, the PICS. Um, so there were uh, 40 kids aged 1 to 18 years, 20 were male and 20 were female. Um, in terms of the diagnoses, um, neurological, congenital malformations and chromosomal abnormalities, autoimmune disorders, respiratory, gastro gastroenterology, organ failure, etc. So they're, they're really complicated children. Um, so this model is not condition-based, it's more of a systems-based model. So at the beginning, um, only 13% had um, had a shared care plan, that should say. <laughs> um, and following, um, following enrolment in the PCC, 100% had a shared care plan. Um, in terms of the PICS domains, access to care, 20% um, felt at baseline that they had adequate access to care. And we only have 10 follow-up surveys, so this is very preliminary and very new. And we're still collecting this at the six-month follow-ups. Um, so there were improvements in terms of care goal creation, that improved by 20%. Family impact um, improved by 34%. Communication actually looked like it went down, but it's early days. Um, so in the past six months, uh, there was an improvement in, in creation of short-term goals, meaning goals up to six months in the future. Um, so that improved from 55% to 80%. Um, but in some of the other in the, some of the other measures, there was actually very little improvement. But like I said, it's, it's early days. And in particular, we're interested um, who on your child's care team usually made sure that other members of the care team knew about information related to your child's health care. And it seems to have remained that it, it is the mum or the, or the parent who is the main person here. So looking at Addison and her family, they said, we are much better off now with specialist access. 
PCC has really helped with connections between Sydney and there's lots less travel. She said, I knew the plan, Sydney knew the plan and my local team knew the plan. So she felt, and I'm way over time. Um, so, so really for that family, things had really improved. And I think it's really quite important to collect the qualitative data around this. So the MELP model is valued by, by patients and their families. Um, it engages end users. Uh, it has been sustained for the last two years. Um, but there is a need to test the model in a pragmatic trial, and we've applied for funding to do that. There's also a need for robust health economic evaluation and um, you know, to, to determine the in incremental cost effectiveness and incremental cost utility of the model. A big thank you for a big, to a big team, and these things don't happen you know, by one person working alone. This requires a lot of collaboration. And of course, thank you to all coordinators, parents, patients, um, and the care teams. Um, Marambiji, in case you were wondering, means big water in Wiradjuri language, local Aboriginal language. And this is the Marambiji River that you're looking at. So that's the big water. Thank you.